Hey guys, this is Mr. Breen, and in this video I'll be talking about making adjustments to GDP. Okay, one of the very important things about GDP is that, at least in this country, we measure it in dollars, but in any country, you're going to measure it in your local unit of currency. Now, this actually creates a problem. So, anything else we might measure, let's take a metric measure. So, you might measure somebody's height in centimeters. Centimeters. And the nice thing about centimeters is that they don't change, okay? Their value doesn't change. Um, but the value of the dollar does change. Now, let's say that we live in a world where the centimeter also changes, okay? And let's take this person and say that this person is, oh, how many centimeters tall should we say this person is? Let's say this person is 180 centimeters tall. Now, let's say that the value of the centimeter, the value of the centimeter drops by half, okay? Every centimeter now is half as long as the old centimeter used to be. It's less valuable. That means that our person, our person, has changed height to 360 centimeters. Okay, the new centimeter is only half as long as the old centimeter is, um, so the person is now 360 centimeters tall, except he hasn't actually gotten any taller. The problem then is that because our centimeter changed value, it appears that our person is taller on paper, but in reality, he's no taller than he used to be. The same thing can happen with GDP because it's measured in dollars, okay? Um, it can look like GDP is growing even when GDP really isn't growing if there's inflation. So here I'm going to introduce a couple of important terms that you're going to need to know, one of which is nominal GDP. Nominal is a word meaning in name only. Nominal GDP is GDP measured in current prices. Current prices. And nominal GDP is subject to the problem we saw up here. Okay, last year the centimeter was, you know, the normal centimeter you guys are accustomed to. But this year it's half of what it used to be. So now GDP looks like it grew a lot even though it didn't. Okay, so this is centimeters in current centi height in current centimeters. And this over here is height in current centimeters this year. So these would be nominal heights. For real GDP, instead, you take some base year and use the prices from that base year in calculating GDP. So real GDP is a way of trying to eliminate inflation's distorted, distorting effects from GDP. So we could take last year as the base year for centimeters and say, well, we're going to say that the centimeter, um, we're going to use the same centimeter and measure him in those centimeters, in which case he is now still 180 centimeters, thus accurately showing us that this person has not grown. We could do it the other way around, and we could take this as our base year. And if that's our base year, then the person is going to be 360 centimeters this year. And last year, he was also 360 centimeters. Okay, so let's show you some examples here. So let's say a country can produce either pies or donuts. And uh, in year one, they produced 10 pies and 12 donuts. And in year two, they produced 11 pies and 13 donuts. So output went up slightly. Okay, um, the price in year one of a pie was $5, and in year two, the price of a, of a pie was $10, whereas in year one for donuts, the price was $1, and in year two, the price was $2, so we were, we're seeing some inflation. In fact, 100% um, inflation. So in year one, in year one, the nominal GDP was 10 pies times the price of $50 plus 12 donuts times the price of $1 equals... $62. Okay, the year two nominal GDP is 11 pies times $10 that they were sold for and 13 donuts times the $2 they were sold for. So that gives us a year two nominal GDP of $136. Looks like massive growth, right? In fact, the percentage growth here, percentage growth, is roughly, I, I did this on my calculator, I'm ashamed, 119%. Okay, so but let's do this with a base year, and let's take year one, let's have base year be year one prices, so we're going to use these prices only. So that means that in year one, it's 10 pies times $5, and 12 donuts times $1, add that together, and you get a real GDP of $62. 
$8, okay, no big deal. And then in year two, you're going to have 11 pies times the base year price of $5 and 13 donuts times the base year price of $1. And if you add all that together, you're going to get 55 plus 13 equals $68. And that, and again, I used my calculator, is a mere 9.68% growth. Okay, but we don't need to use year one as our base year. We could instead use year two prices as our base year prices. So instead, let's do that. So let's use year two prices as our base year. So in year one, 10 pies for $10 each and 12 donuts for $2 each gives us a total, I'll use blue, a total of $100 plus $24, so $124. That's our real GDP using base year prices. Uh, using base year two prices for year one. And then for year two, we're going to say it's 11 pies sold for $10 each. 13 donuts sold for $2 each is going to be a total of 136 whoops, $136. Now I'll spare you the complex calculations that I know you were just about to do and tell you that this gives us a percentage growth rate of 9.68%. Now, notice a couple things. Because our inflation was actually 100%, our growth rate looked like it was massively bigger than it really was, which was this. Notice also that no matter which base year we used, base year 1 or base year 2, we came up with the same percentage growth rate, uh, which necessarily will happen. Now, let's do this with aggregations instead. So let's say that we have a country in which nominal GDP in year one was $10 million and nominal GDP in year two was $10,605,000. We also know that in this country, inflation in year one was 5%. Okay, if we don't adjust for inflation and we just use nominal GDP, we're going to see that there is a 6.05% growth rate in nominal GDP. Okay, but that's clearly going to be higher than what the real growth rate is. Let's instead use year one. Okay, year one, that's going to be our base year uh, for measuring GDP, uh, real GDP. So um, since we're using year one, nominal and real GDP will be the same in year one. Okay, so there we are, $10 million. Now to find year two real GDP, we're going to have to try to subtract out the effects of that 5% inflation that happened over the course of the year. So what we're going to do is we're going to take $10,605,000 and we're going to divide it by 1.05. And that, it turns out, I'll spare you again, the calculation is $10,100,000. Thousand dollars for an actual growth rate, a real growth rate, oops, not dollars, of 1%. Much more modest growth, right? 6.05% looks really, really, really good. 1%, uh, not so much. But we could again do this with year two prices as our base year. So we're going to go ahead and say that um, we're going to measure prices after this 5% increase in inflation. Okay, since we're using um, year two as our base year, then nominal and real GDP for that year are going to be the same. So they are. There you go. Um, and since we know that inflation went up by 5%, all we have to do to figure out year one real GDP is multiply 10 million by 1.05, and that's going to be 10 million 500 so 10.5 million, 10.5 million. And uh, if you want to know what the growth rate is here, it's 1%. So 6.05% was the nominal rate of growth, but that wasn't that meaningful because that didn't exclude the effect of 5% inflation. Once we excluded those effects, we got real growth rates of 1%, no matter what base year we chose. Okay, finally, and a bit more simply, we also need to account for population because it's not just how much you produce as a country, it's also how much access to that production, how much access to that stuff every person in your country has. So let's take these two countries of Gilder and Florin, and let's say that Florin has a real GDP of, let's say, $10 billion, and Gilder has a real GDP of $50 billion. Now, it looks like Gilder is significantly richer than Florent, five times richer, actually. 
But let's also say that we find out Florin has a population of 10 million, and Gilder has a population of 100 million. Well, Florin is sharing this $10 billion production among only, uh, only 10 million people, whereas Gilder has to share this $50 billion worth of production among 10 times as many people. What we really want to know is, what's the real GDP per capita, which is another way of saying per person? This is a pretty easy calculation, right? $10 billion divided by 10 million people is just $1,000 per person. And in Gilder, okay, $50 billion divided by 100 million people is $500 per person. So even when we've adjusted for inflation, okay, and we have real GDP, we also need to adjust for population.